Have you ever pondered the enigma that is death, and what transpires in our bodies after we draw our last breath? The topic of death, an inevitable and universal experience, has long been shrouded in mystery and often associated with fear. Yet, it's a process as natural as birth, growth, and aging. It's the final chapter in the book of life, a chapter that we all must write, whether we like it or not. Our bodies are marvels of nature, intricate systems working in harmony to enable us to live, breathe, think, and feel. But what happens when the harmony ceases, when the music of life comes to a standstill? When life departs, our bodies don't just stop. They embark on a new journey, a post-life odyssey that's both fascinating and a bit eerie. It's a journey that unfolds in stages, each marked by specific biological and chemical changes. From the moment we draw our last breath, our bodies initiate a sequence of events designed to return us to the Earth, to recycle us back into the universe from whence we came. This is the circle of life, the grand design of nature that ensures nothing goes to waste, that everything serves a purpose, even in death. This journey, while it may seem morbid to some, is a testament to the incredible complexity and resilience of life. It's a process that highlights the interconnectedness of all living things and underscores the fact that we are, quite literally, stardust. Death, as much as it is an end, is also a beginning. It's the start of a new cycle, a transformation that sees us become part of the very fabric of the universe. It's a process that's as awe-inspiring as it is humbling. So, let's embolden our curiosity and confront our fears. Let's shine a light on the shadows and uncover the secrets that lie beyond the veil of life. This is not a journey into the macabre, but an exploration of the natural, the inevitable, the universal. So let's embark on this fascinating journey to understand what happens to our bodies after we die. In the immediate aftermath of death, the body starts its transformation. This transformation is not a sudden event, but a gradual process that begins with the cessation of vital functions. No more heartbeat, no more brain activity, no more breath. The machinery of life grinds to a halt, and the body, once a bustling metropolis of activity, becomes a quiet, deserted city. This stillness sets the stage for algor mortis, a Latin term meaning the coolness of death. This is the period when the body begins to lose its warmth, gradually cooling down to match the temperature of its surroundings. It's like a hearth that has lost its fire, its glow fading slowly into the cold night. But rather than a chilling end, think of it as the start of a new cycle. Thus begins the body's journey back to the elements from which it was formed. As minutes turn to hours, the body embarks on a complex process of decomposition. This is not a process for the faint of heart, but it's a fascinating journey that demonstrates the remarkable resilience and adaptability of nature. The first stage of decomposition, known as autolysis, begins almost immediately after death. As the body's cells are deprived of oxygen, they start to break down. The catalyst for this breakdown is not an external invader, but rather enzymes within the cells themselves. Yes, the very enzymes that have been working tirelessly throughout our lives to keep us alive and functioning, now become agents of decay. This internal process of self-digestion starts when the cell membranes rupture releasing these enzymes. They begin to break down the cells, leading to the breakdown of tissues and organs. This process of destruction is not a random act, but a carefully orchestrated dance of life and death. As the body's cells continue to break down, a fascinating phenomenon occurs, rigor mortis. This is a state of stiffness that sets in, usually within two to six hours after death. It's caused by the chemical changes in the muscles, which lead to a temporary rigidity. So why does this happen? Well, when we're alive, our muscles contract and relax due to the actions of two proteins, actin and myosin. After death, without the energy supply to reset this interaction, the muscles become locked in a contracted state, leading to the stiffness known as rigor mortis. But this state of rigidity is not permanent. As decomposition continues and the body's proteins are broken down further, this stiffness eventually dissipates. This stage of decomposition known as putrefaction sees the body soften and bloat as gases produced by bacteria are released. The decomposition process is a stark reminder of the transient nature of life. Our bodies, once vibrant and full of life, return to the natural world in a process that is as fascinating as it is inevitable. With the onset of rigor mortis the body has taken its first steps towards returning to nature. After a few days nature's recyclers start their work. The earth is teeming with life, some of which we can see, and much of which we can't. Microorganisms, insects and other creatures are nature's cleanup crew. 
they play a pivotal role in the decomposition process breaking down organic matter into its most basic components. Let's begin with microorganisms. Bacteria and fungi are the unseen heroes of decomposition. They exist everywhere, even inside us, cohabitating peacefully until the moment of death. Once the body's defenses cease, these microscopic life forms begin their work, breaking down tissues and cells, feasting on the buffet of nutrients now available. Insects, particularly flies and beetles, are also key players in decomposition. Flies, for instance, are often the first to arrive at the scene. They lay their eggs on the body, which soon hatch into larvae, commonly known as maggots. These maggots consume the soft tissues, growing rapidly as they do so. Beetles, on the other hand, prefer the drier parts of the body, gnawing at the skin, muscles, and tendons. During this time, a process known as putrefaction takes place. This is the breakdown of proteins, leading to the formation of gases like methane, hydrogen sulfide, and ammonia. These gases build up inside the body, causing it to bloat. This bloating eventually leads to the rupture of the body's tissues, releasing the gases and causing the body to deflate. This process may seem grisly but it's a crucial part of life cycle. The nutrients from the decomposed body return to the earth, enriching the soil and promoting the growth of plants. The circle of life continues, with death giving rise to new life. The work of these tiny recyclers is largely unseen and unappreciated, but without them, our world would be a very different place. They're the silent workers tidying up after life's party, making sure that nothing goes to waste. In this way, life after death becomes a feast for millions of tiny lives. The final transformation of the body is a slow but inevitable process. This is the stage where the body in its most essential form takes a final bow before merging back with the universe. We call this process skeletonization. The term might seem a bit daunting but it's merely the final stage of decomposition where all that's left of the body is the bare skeleton. The body's soft tissue is completely broken down, leaving behind the hard durable bones. Depending on environmental factors this process can take anywhere from a few months to several years. What hastens or slows down this process? Well a myriad of factors. The climate plays a significant role. In hot, arid climates the process is typically quicker, while in cooler, moist environments it can take considerably longer. The presence of scavengers and insects can also speed up the process, as can the body's initial condition at the time of death. But even the hardy bones do not remain forever. Over time they too start to break down. This happens as the minerals within the bones leach out into the surrounding soil. The bones gradually lose their rigidity, becoming brittle and eventually crumbling away. This process is not as grim as it might seem, in fact it's quite poetic. The body which was once nourished by the fruits of the earth, now gives back, returning its elements to the soil. The calcium in our bones feeds the plants, the carbon in our tissues contributes to the growth of new life. Each of us is a temporary custodian of a few pounds of elements borrowed from the universe. Death is merely the process of returning what was borrowed. In the grand scheme of things our bodies are transient vessels, carrying these elements through the journey of life. And so, the final transformation is complete. The body, in its elemental form, merges back with the earth, nourishing new life, perpetuating the cycle. In the end, we all return to the elements, completing the cycle of life. Our journey through the post-mortem changes in the human body has been both intriguing and enlightening. We've taken a deep dive into the uncharted waters of the afterlife, not from a spiritual perspective but from a purely physical one. We've witnessed the immediate aftermath of death, where the body's processes gradually wind down. We've seen how the body transitions into a state of decomposition, a process as natural as life itself. We observe the role of nature's recyclers those microscopic organisms that aid in breaking down our bodies, returning us to the earth from whence we came. Our exploration led us to the final transformation, where the body, now a mere skeleton, continues to contribute to the cycle of life, providing nutrients and minerals to nourish the soil, and in turn, the life that springs from it. So the next time you ponder the mystery of death, remember that it's just another part of the grand cycle of life.